Phew, it's been a long day of justice committee submissions on the conversion therapy bill. We're having some great discussions about the role of parents and there are three questions that have been on my mind and I thought I'd share some clips from them. The first is will this bill criminalise parents who do not accept their children's sexual or gender identity and I'll play you a quick clip which summarises that question. Distress or harm are subjective terms and if measured by the one who is experiencing it then it could be defined as anything they don't like. And I think to expose parents to criminal action because their advice has upset a child, even greatly upset, is not a road that New Zealand should be going down. The truth is that's not what the bill is designed to do. It's not trying to interfere with open and caring conversations with families or to undermine the supportive role of parents. The threshold for criminal offending is very high as it's currently drafted and the Attorney General actually needs to consent to criminal prosecutions at this point. But for those families that react negatively and might be struggling to accept or openly oppose to their child's sexuality or gender identity, it wouldn't be considered uh, conversion practice or conversion therapy unless some further action was taken, say forcing the child to change. And I'll play you a quick clip from the vestry members of St Barnabas talking about how they actually want to see the bill go further to make it clear that that's not okay. We would like confirmation that religious conversion practices are unacceptable no matter what their source or by whom the practices are recommended or performed. Groups or agents acting on behalf of groups, recommending or performing conversion practices should be deemed to have committed the proposed criminal offences and incur liability if their actions are directed towards an individual because of the individual's sexual orientation, gender identity or gender expression, or performed with the intention of changing or suppressing the individual's sexual orientation, gender identity or gender expression. The second question which has come up is about whether we're criminalising parents for giving advice and talking to their child about hormone blockers. We're not, but I'll play you a quick clip of that view. Well, we do oppose the Conversion Practices Prohibition Legislation Bill because it potentially criminalises parents and religious teachers who emphasise biblical practices, biblical principles, namely that God created man, male and female, according to Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. Well, parents and religious teachers who encourage children to be content with the bodies that God created them in would appear to be liable to prosecution if this bill were to become law. This idea of being content in God's creation is one that really spoke to me about how uh, children and adults come to terms with our own identities and our place in society and in our communities. Reverend Kathy again from St Barnabas had a great perspective on trusting our children to know who they are. And that we never fully understand ourselves or fully understand God and that um, we as parents or adults or caring for young people should always be aware of the, the differences in each other. Um, and, and faith is about trusting in God's will for each other um, and for our children. And as parents we can be, or as adults, we can be very unhappy about children's decisions and viewpoints but we can't force our children to be something they're not. Um, and to me, trusting in God's will for children and for others is what it's about. I guess the trickiness is um, trying to figure out what God's will is, isn't it? Yes, but also acknowledging that children and young people have quite a lot of clarity about who they are. The third question which has come up is about parents needing clarity from the legislation as it's currently drafted, which doesn't actually set out what conversion practices might be. Uh, it's more uh, interested in the intention behind changing someone or forcing someone to change. I'll play you a quick clip from the Parish Council of St Andrews in the city, uh, from Fiona, about her personal experience with uh, coming to the church. And it felt like what they were hating was part of me. I listened to sermons telling me that gay people needed to change who they were, remain celibate, or go to hell. 
I had members of the church pray for God to take away my same-sex attraction. I experienced sexual assault by someone who thought that was the way to to change me to straight. I had a pastor pray to drive out the spirit of homosexuality. And on another occasion, a friend took me to his church where people I'd never met restrained me and prayed over me to be delivered from demons. Fortunately, only the spirit of homosexuality was the focus at that time. I like to think that I had an invisible but glorious shield of bisexual energy that protected me. But in all seriousness, what protected me and my widower from being crushed was the unconditional love of my family. Ironically, given the concerns certain churches have expressed about parental rights, the church was driving a wedge between me and my parents. So that's where we're at on our thinking and the close of day two of submissions uh, on the conversion practices bill. I'm really interested in what parents and money were thinking here and about what our Christian communities expect um, from us and any wisdom you have. So please get in touch.